Every pump has a certain set of characteristics that depend on its design, the fluid that is being pumped, and the way the pump is installed. Next we will discuss some of the physical parameters related to the fluid being pumped and the pump itself that affect its operation. The density of water is around 1000 kg per meters cubed. To obtain the pressure generated by a column of a liquid other than water, either the density of that liquid or its specific gravity should be known. The liquid's density can be obtained by multiplying its specific gravity by the density of water. Substances that are less dense than water have a specific gravity that is less than 1, while substances that are more dense than water have a specific gravity that is larger than 1. Of course the specific gravity of water itself is equal to 1. When placed in a water tank, a substance that is less dense than water or whose specific gravity is smaller than 1, tends to float to the surface. While a substance that has a higher specific gravity than water would sink to the bottom. In metric units, the density is usually given in kilograms per cubic meters. To convert from metric to English units of pounds per cubic foot. One needs to multiply the metric value by 0.062428. And conversely, to convert from pounds per cubic foot to kilograms per cubic meters. Multiply by 16.018. The pressure of a given fluid in a certain location is the force per unit area that the fluid generates in that location. The pressure at a point is equal from all directions. The pressure can be defined based on the reference pressure, with respect to which the pressure measurement is taken. Pressure can also be defined based on how the pressure probe is moving with respect to the fluid. Pressure is always measured as a difference between two pressure values. The first value is that of the fluid pressure that we want to measure. The other value is a reference pressure value. When the reference pressure is the atmospheric pressure, then the pressure reading is called the gauge pressure. The gauge pressure can have positive and negative values depending on the value of the pressure reading as compared to the atmospheric pressure. When the reference pressure is equal to zero, then the pressure reading is called the absolute pressure. The absolute pressure can only have positive values. When the reference pressure is equal to any value other than zero or atmospheric, then the pressure reading is called the relative pressure between the fluid and the reference pressure location, and can have positive or negative values. That reference arbitrary pressure can be the pressure at another point in the fluid, or it can be the pressure within another fluid. Based on the relative motion between the fluid and the probe that is measuring the pressure, we can define three different values of the pressure. The static pressure, the stagnation pressure, and the dynamic pressure. The static pressure is the pressure that is measured when the pressure probe is moving with the fluid. The reason why the probe needs to be moving with the flow, is to exclude all pressure readings that are due to changes in the momentum of the fluid when it impinges on the pressure probe. Another way to make sure that the pressure due to the momentum of the fluid is excluded from the pressure reading, is to measure the pressure with the pressure probe oriented perpendicular to the flow. In other words the pressure is measured perpendicular to the streamlines. One setup for measuring pressure perpendicular to the flow involves measuring the pressure through a wall tap, which is a tube connected to the main pipe through a small opening in the wall of the pipe. The mouth opening of the hole connecting the tap to the flow channel must be smooth and flush with the flow channel's wall. The tap is connected to a pressure measuring device, such as a pressure transducer or a manometer, which will be discussed later. A static pressure probe can also be used to measure the static pressure by orienting the probe so that it is parallel to the flow. The probe has small holes drilled on its side that are perpendicular to the flow when the probe is oriented parallel to the flow. The probe can be rotated slightly to the right and to the left until a minimum pressure reading is obtained. Similar to the wall tap, the probe is connected to a pressure measuring device, such as a pressure transducer or a manometer. 
the minimum pressure reading is the static pressure at that point. The stagnation, or total pressure, is the pressure of a fluid when it is decelerated to a velocity of zero in a frictionless process. In other words it is the pressure that is measured by a pressure probe when it is oriented parallel, and facing the flow direction. A total pressure probe can be used to measure the stagnation pressure by orienting the probe so that it is parallel to the flow. The probe has a small hole drilled on its front edge that is parallel to the flow and facing the flow's direction when the probe is oriented parallel to the flow. The probe can be rotated slightly to the right and to the left until a maximum pressure reading is obtained. The maximum pressure reading is the stagnation pressure at that point. The dynamic pressure is simply the difference between the stagnation pressure and the static pressure. When the fluid's velocity is zero, the static pressure is equal to the stagnation pressure, and the dynamic pressure is equal to zero. One setup for measuring the dynamic pressure involves the use of both a static pressure tap and a total pressure probe. The difference between the reading of the total pressure probe and the static pressure tap is equal to the dynamic pressure. Another setup for measuring the dynamic pressure involves the use of a pitot tube. Bernoulli's equation is an expression of the pressure and potential energy within the flow for steady and incompressible flow. In the case of a frictionless flow with no energy added or subtracted from the flow, Bernoulli's equation takes the shown simplified form. At any point within the flow field, the pressure plus the multiplication of the density by the velocity squared divided by 2 plus the multiplication of the density times the gravitational acceleration times the height at that point is equal to a constant value for a given flow condition. In other words, the flow's pressure energy plus the flow's kinetic energy plus the flow's potential energy is equal to a constant value. The first term in Bernoulli's equation is equal to the static pressure. The second term in Bernoulli's equation is equal to the dynamic pressure. The stagnation pressure is equal to the addition of the static and dynamic pressures.